We're going to talk about Baddeley's working memory model as differentiated from Atkins and Schifrin's model. So Atkins and Schifrin's model gives us the basics. They're also present in Baddeley's model, so you don't have to learn a lot more. Atkins and Schifrin would give us what? Sensory memory, short-term memory with rehearsal, and long-term memory that interacts with short-term memory. And then Baddeley's working memory model talks about a mental workbench for processing information. The phonological loop would be essentially that main is rehearsal. You can just repeat things in your head phonologically, auditory information going on and on and on inside your head. Visio spatial scratch pad is something that he adds to this. The idea that you can see images in your mind sometimes. So if you think about it, let's think about it. Think for a second, annoying noise notwithstanding, about pals. Can you visualize in your mind the front of pals? Draw a little picture of pals and see if you know what's on pals. I don't know. I have a general idea of what I think might be a pals. I have a general idea about its color. I have a general idea about its shape. But there's certain features on it that I am semi-sure about and other ones that I'm very sure about that if I'm doing that, I'm actually using a visual sense inside my head. So the Visio Spatial Scratch Pad gets at the idea that you have a visual sense internal to your mind as well as an auditory or phonological sense. So I could say, how do I get to PALS? I might say that to myself. I go out the door, make a right, get to the first street, make a right, it's on my left. Or I might actually visualize it and say, well, there, go outside the front doors and you'll see a street in front of you. And as you see that street, then you're going to turn to your right and as that, you'll see the Carnegie. Right, and the Carnegie you'll see, you'll make a right at the Carnegie, and when you get to the stoplight, then you'll look to your left for this crazy building. This crazy building is an interesting thing because it talks about late selection. For years I came to Johnson City before I got employment here. Many years. Somewhere around 94 to 2003. When I came to do my interview at Johnson City, East Tennessee State University in 2004, early 2004, it was the first time I realized that the university was across the street from PALS. Because for all those years, being from Charlotte, North Carolina, I had never seen a PALS. I had never seen anybody make a building out of fries and shakes and hamburgers and, and hot dogs or whatever's up there. Every time I passed by, I'd be like, damn, look at that. And I would look at it. It's what grabbed my attention as I went by a university on my left. I looked at the hot dog to my right. And when I came for an interview, I then was faced with the fact that, oh, these are across the street from each other. I never knew that, or if I did know it, I certainly didn't remember it. So when we're talking about that visuospatial scratch pad, we're talking about visualization in addition to being able to say things in your head. The central executive is a concept that's kind of new here, but makes sense as a metaphor to what we've already been talking about. So what Badley's saying is you inside your head act as your own central executive to decide what to attend to at any given time. How you're going to use your mental work bench. Whether you're using phonological information or whether you're using visual information. How you're trying to attend to things. What kinds of things you're going to attend to. How long you'll remember that in short term memory. What kind of things you pull out of your long term memory to remember it with. And how all that fits into your moment to moment life. Because you're using working memory all the time. There's not a moment that you're not thinking of something. And while you're thinking of it, it's actually working in your short-term memory, which is why they call it working memory. But you'll soon not be thinking of it unless you do something to change that. Well, who decides? You decide. You being the inside I. I with a capital I. I decide, but I don't usually pay attention to the processes. Most of the time, this happens pretty much automatically. The times that you notice it are when somebody asks you what the name of that song is and you're like, oh, if you hadn't asked me, I could have told you. And then he's trying to struggle to remember something. Now you're conscious that you're having trouble remembering stuff. But normally, if you heard the music that you were familiar with, the name would just pop right into your head from long-term memory because you had stored it there. If it's the first time you've ever heard it, it couldn't be there. But other elements of music might be there and you might go, that's the kind of music I like. 
From where would that come? From your long-term memory, having decided what kind of music you do like and what kind of music you do not like. So the working memory model really emphasizes the visuospatial scratch pad in addition to phonological loop, which is maintenance rehearsal, and this idea of a central executive where you're using your mind as a workbench to integrate information and deal with information on a moment-to-moment -moment basis throughout your day.